Hello people, how are you doing? Welcome, my name is Adam. This is Memento Mori, okay? And, and listen, before you go down below and leave some little snarky comment about my poor fashion choices with these glasses, please try to be sensitive to the fact that you are witnessing a therapy session, okay? More specifically, a color therapy session, also known as chromotherapy. Uh, this is not a joke. My buddy Jameson, uh, the man, not the drink, uh, he turned me on to this and, uh, you know, chromotherapy is the idea that, you know, by feeding our bodies different colors, we can heal ourselves and improve ourselves both mentally and physically uh, in different ways, depending on the color in which we're feeding on. You know, we're, I'm hitting double duty. Of course, I'm seeing through the rose-colored glasses, uh, but I'm also having a, a strawberry Fanta, okay? And... Um, <laughs> Somebody take a screenshot of this because this is the picture of what like the verge of a mental breakdown is uh, You know in your mid-30s. I don't know, but I I'm having uh, a strawberry Fanta to also tap into my Buddhist side Okay, and I am NOT a Buddhist, but I do have a Buddhist side. Okay strawberry Fanta. I don't think it's um Buddha himself but uh, there's a bunch of like baby ghosts that are involved in the situation uh, and they love red drinks, specifically Strawberry Fanta. It cannot be orange, okay, people? It's gotta be Red Fanta. The baby ghosts love them. Uh, so I thought that, combined with the chromotherapy, should keep me afloat for at least another month. So, cheers. A and with our uh, red chromotherapy, okay, what are we getting out of this? Uh, uh, first of all, I'm supposed to wear these like 15 to 30 minutes a day, okay? And with this, I am supposed to get Feelings of vitality, power, self-confidence, and safety. Okay, that's what red brings us. Uh, and I don't quite know how seeing the world through, you know, Cujo blood red is supposed to make me feel safe. Uh, because right now I feel like I'm kind of like in a, like a Dario Argento film. Okay, <laughs> it's like a very giallo situation up in here. Uh, but we'll, we'll go with it. And God knows uh, we all could use a nice therapy session because... Uh, today we're going to be talking about the topic of book prizes, okay? Literary prizes. Um, and every year there, there are dozens of literary prizes, uh, both, you know, for fiction and for nonfiction and beyond. And um, if you're a regular viewer here on, on the booktube, you'd notice that a lot of people love to talk about these, okay? <laughs> and uh, I'm curious, I'm, I, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, I'm someone, I read a fair share of new releases, but not a ton, but enough that I, I know usually kind of these books that are nominated. Uh, but yet I'm never super into following these prizes for a multitude of reasons. Um, and in terms of being a viewer here on, on you know, a, a bookish community, it, it can get exhausting watching these people talk about the same books and the same prizes and especially these these British uh, awards, which are so drawn out because they release like a long list of nominees of books and then they whittle that down to a short list and then, you know, eventually they name a winner and it's just this big long process. Uh, and on, on one hand, I totally understand why they do that because it's, it's great for the, the publishing industry and, and for these authors to get, you know, recognized. Um, you know, having these lists out there and, and people reading the books. Uh, but it also kind of cheapens it because these lists just get longer and longer. Um, but of course, the quality of these works being put forth um, continue to be more and more kind of lame. So it's like, I don't know, it's, it's just kind of um, exhausting to see all the content. Uh, but I am, I'm curious for those for those who who do watch the the bookish content, um, you know, on different channels regularly, um, do you like watching people do those videos? The you know the prediction videos and the reaction videos, and you know, depending on the prize, the people that follow them are never happy with the list. Okay, so they always have to make a reaction video bitching about the books listed, and you know, they make a grumpy thumbnail, and it's just like. 
It's too much. It's too much. Uh, you know, we can only handle one more goddamn think piece on Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan uh, before we all just want to blow our brains out, right? And you guys already know, I just like bitching about this stuff. It's really not that big of a deal. So so don't get offended if you're you're someone that's super into it. Um, and, and I understand the attraction, okay? Even though I'm not necessarily into these book prizes, I understand the appeal because every year without fail, I get drawn into the whole Oscar season, okay, with movies. I love I love watching the award seasons and I love seeing what films kind of emerge as front runners. Um, I love it. And I'm very aware that the Oscars and the Academy is bullshit and that it's all based on, on politics and money and, and kind of creating this narrative rather than rewarding, you know, artistry. Um, I'm, I'm very aware of that. But, you know, it's still fun to watch all the movies nominated and to watch the ceremony and to, to bitch about the, the, you know, the winning movie, which is always the wrong one. You know, it, it's, it's just fun, right? So I get it. I think the biggest difference between the two is that it's one thing to watch all the movies of, of the Oscars and, you know, dedicate two hours of your life to watching some shit fest, okay? But it's, it's a lot different than, you know, dedicating hours of your life reading a 500-page book about mermaids by something. What is her name? Imogene Hermes Gower? Imogene Hermes Gower. Like, just saying that gives me the hives. Can I just say, like, I feel my vitality levels just, just like, raising here. It's, it's kind of unbelievable, this chromotherapy. Let's just quickly run down uh, a few of, of the big prizes going um, on right now. Of course, we have to mention the Pulitzer, which was just uh, released this past week. Uh, I, I do follow... Well, I don't say I follow, but I, I do try to read the Pulitzer winner every year. I always like the Pulitzer, uh, one, because it focuses around American literature, of course, which you know I'm all about. Uh, but secondly, I like it just because it's it's not drawn out like those other awards that I talked about. You know, they, they, they do the announcement every year. Of course, the Pulitzer mostly focuses on, on journalism and whatnot, but, you know, they do have the, the, the fiction winner. They announce the winner along with the couple runners-up that were in the running as well, and that's it, okay? Nice and clean and simple, and we're done. Um, and the winner this year was... Less by Andrew Sean Greer, which I guess kind of came out of nowhere to win it. Um, and I haven't read it. And it certainly, you know, it seems like a book that's kind of up my alley. It's, I think it's about a struggling writer and kind of uh, a satire uh, about uh, an American abroad, I think. I don't know a ton about it. But, but definitely it is one I, I would like to read um, sometime this year. Uh, like I said, I always try to read the Pulitzers um, and I always find... Uh, their choice is interesting, um, even though they usually are pretty predictable. Um, so it's nice um, to have a year where it wasn't. Also huge on the booktube is uh, something called the Women's Prize, formerly known as the Bailey's Women's Prize, but I think Bailey stopped writing the checks, which is unfortunate. Um, but let's be real. The Women's Prize is predominantly followed by gay white men, okay, <laughs> which is perfectly fine, but that's just how it is. Um, and yeah, the, the list is whatever. Um, of course, Manhattan Beach is on there. I, I, I still, I should read Manhattan Beach, but I'll, I'll probably do it on, on you know, the low. Um, I, the only other book on that list that I, I still do want to get to and I have a copy of is Elmet by Fiona Mosley. Okay, it's not Fiona Apple. That was my mistake in a past video. Um, <laughs> but... Um, my, my reason for picking it, it up is my good friend uh, Britta Bowler over at the Second Shelf, and, and Britta loves a good book prize, okay, and I love her. Um, she promised me that it will give me kind of Cormac McCarthy vibes, okay, and um, even though I wouldn't put it beneath Britta to lie, um, I, I'm still going to give it a chance. Uh, the book, I think it's kind of like a a dark family drama that takes place in a rural community, uh, which, again, is, is kind of my jam. So I, I, I do still want to read Elmet, okay? Even even with it being overhyped, okay? And finally, I'll mention the International Man Booker Prize, uh, which uh, is a kind of a precursor to the Man Booker, uh, which I, I actually did a reaction video to last year. So, you know, I'm complete bullshit. I'm making all these prize videos 
uh, claiming that I'm not into it. Um, but yeah, the, the, the international man booker, the precursor to the, the main man booker, celebrating translated fiction from the previous years. Um, I, I thought the list just looks miserable. <laughs> and I know it's, I know it's partially miserable because I actually just finished a book from it. Um, not because it was nominated. Okay. Hold my hand. Um, but because uh, it was by Laszlo Krasnokorhai, okay, who is an author I've been meaning to read for some time. Uh, his book, The World Goes On, was released at the end of last year. And um, it's marketed as a collection of short stories. Uh, and I don't know. I'd probably more say it's like under the, the genre of experimental essay, if anything. Uh, but who knows? It was so bad. It's too bad because I felt really well equipped uh, going into my first Krasnokorhe, uh, even though I haven't read him, uh, one, because I know he's kind of associated with these kind of, this postmodern, bleak, vaguely apocalyptic kind of uh, fiction, okay, which is something that I can, I can gel with, not all the time, but I can get down with that, but also mainly because I was familiar with him as a collaborator with uh, Bilatar, the Hungarian filmmaker who I love, okay, I love Bilatar, and Tar has adapted two of Krasnokorhai's novels, uh, one being uh, Shatantengo, which he adapted into a <laughs> seven-hour epic, okay, it's, it's, it's like uh, the longest movie I've ever sat through, um, and then the other being one of my favorite films of all time, Verkmeister Harmonies, which is an adaptation of uh, Krasnokorhai's Melancholy of Resistance, uh, which, funny enough, I think won the the old uh, Man Booker International years ago. Um, but either way, I haven't read those books, so I thought this would be a nice introduction, but it wasn't. It, it made no sense. Here is my 30-second review of The World Goes On by Laszlo Krasnokorhai, okay? New World Order as the Twin Towers Fall, comma, comma, no period. A lecture series on area theory will be held by an art historian, a poet, a geographer, a biologist, a musicologist, an architect, a philosopher, an anarchist, a mathematician, an astronomer, and a giant whale that may or may not represent God, comma, comma, no period. What is in a drop of water, no period? We will stretch away at the speed of 900 kilometers per hour at the altitude of approximately 10,000 meters and north by northwesterly direction, high above the clouds in the blazingly blue sky toward the hope that we will all die, comma, comma, no period, mother, comma, comma, no period, comma, comma, the world goes on, comma, 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 no period. So there you go. There are my thoughts on the world goes on. If you didn't understand that review, Good luck with the goddamn book, okay? <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's it. That's my thoughts on book prizes and on, on uh, Krasnokorhai. Let me know your own down below. Uh, and now it's the big moment. The therapy session is done uh, and we're gonna remove the glasses, okay? Yeah, yeah, wow, wow. Okay, let's, first of all, let's go through this. Vitality through the roof. I'm feeling vital as hell. Power at an all-time high, definitely succeeded. Self-confidence, I didn't have much of a problem to begin with, but it's there. And safety, yeah, I, I feel pretty safe. I feel safe. Like, the, chromotherapy is legit, okay? Along with that and my um, dedication to my Buddhist side, uh, I'm feeling on top of the world, and I hope you are too. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.